Hello and good morning. How are you doing, Christina? Good. How are you, Arrow? Absolutely fantastic. You guys at National Geo, you just keep coming up with these books. And you know what? I got to tell you, my neighbor across the street, Garrick, when, when I go over there and we sit on the front lawn and we read these books, I wish you guys could see th- what you do to their imaginations. Oh, I love that. I'm almost like, can you send me a video sometime? That is that just makes my heart so happy. Well, I mean, because I mean, National Geo has gone from being that magazine that we would pick up at the dentist's office or go to the doctor's office and we would learn about parts of the world. But the way that you're outreaching now, I mean, you're showing us. And in fact, this one here, it asks questions that we're all going to ask anyway. And it's fun to learn them. Oh, absolutely. Our whole goal is to spark that sense of adventure, exploration, and curiosity in kids. And we want it to relate to them. It feels like when you're reading these books, you're talking to your best friend about some of the coolest subjects and things that you've always wanted to learn more about. Well, you make me want to go back to be a kid again. I mean, you really do. Because, I mean, it's like, I want this stuff from my childhood to see how I would be in adult shoes. Well, and that's honestly some of the motivation that I have when we make these books. It's like, what would I have wished I had when I was younger? What what do I wish I could have gone to the library and gotten or somebody would have told me? And that, honestly, we're all kids at heart. So I sometimes say our books are really for every age group, even all the way up to 99 years old. You know, what's really interesting is that you really do hit subjects that 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 are about the everyday world, because a, a good example, as we get older, we tend to get gray hair. Why does hair change? And, and, and you know, a lot of people are freaked out about it, but it's it's such a natural thing. Yeah, and it just has to do with the melatonin and melanin in our hair. And as we get older, I mean, different parts of our body, even our ears have hair cells in them. And as they get damaged or older, we just start to lose either color or in the sense of our ears hearing because we just age. I wish we could reverse aging. We do talk about that, too, where we say, can't I live forever? We say, well, right now we don't know how we can live forever, but we're trying to figure out what causes us to slowly stop functioning anymore and we think it's the chromosomes in our body that have and called telomeres that keep getting shorter so that's what we're researching right now how, we, we empower kids by telling them that's a thing how did you come up with all the questions because they really are spot on honestly so this book came from a sister book that was a little bit earlier than this a little bit bigger and each chapter was on a different subject related to the question mm-hmm. why And then we broke it down into the subject matter, which is the why of the human body, and we brought it to our fabulous author, Paige Tower, and we said, we want to break this down into parts, just like the human body. We want to start with anatomy, give everybody a basic overview, ask them the big questions that you wonder about your body, like, why do I breathe? Why is my blood red? And then we want to go into the really detailed questions, like things about our senses or our brain like why is it wrinkly (laughs) one of the questions like the gross ones you never want to ask anybody but you just don't want to know boogers (laughs) why do i pick my nose why do i have boogers you know exactly (laughs) and then we end with this future question of of like empowering the next group of scientists and explorers and and writers to figure out what's going to happen to our bodies in the future what are the things that are unanswered Yeah, see, I'm interested in that because I want to know how these AIs are going to, you know, because, I mean, medically speaking, AIs are going to be so positive to us. How is that going to change it? Do you you dive into something like that? We do talk about the brain versus machines. And right now, the brain still outdoes machines. And we've even talked about things like, well, can we upload our brain to some kind of computer or server? And the truth is, there's so many, we don't have the answers to these questions yet, but but researchers are trying to find out. But the truth is nothing is equal to the human. Whether it's, yeah, there are some computers out there that know a lot, but they don't have a personality. Right. Or we're figuring out how to replicate personalities, but they can't predict certain occurrences or irregularities. And, and so right now, we are still superior. Our brains are still far more complex, and we don't even know everything about them. So AI... Well, it's really useful, honestly, and in some respects, we'll never outdo the human brain. I'll tell you, I giggled like a child when I when I read that it, there's a, over 1,111 questions answered. And I, I giggled because I believe in numerology. That's a good group of numbers you put, to get, you put together there. 
oh, we at Nat Geo love our numbers. We have so many great books. Like this, like this one has some 99 questions. We have one that's called like 5,000 awesome facts about everything. <laughs> and it's just, it's like, how much can you pack into a book that you can hold or put, throw into your backpack? <laughs> why? So why is it that, that, uh, that llamas are, are given permission to spit, but the human being, oh, that's just so gross. You stop doing that. Well, that's the funny thing. We ask, like, how, why are llamas, like, able to spit so far? And, like, when we try, one, we're told it's gross. Yeah. And two, we can't get it very far, no matter how hard <laughs> you try. And we ask, <laughs> and it's funny. I grew up on a little farm in Indiana, and we had llamas. And let me tell you, their spit is pretty gross. <laughs> and it's because they actually regurgitate from their stomach and spit up whatever is in there, a lot of acid. And that's where they get all their momentum. Wow. So you will never be able to do it. You're relying on just your mouth muscles. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if we could use our stomach muscles. <laughs> Growing up on that farm, let me ask you a question, because I grew up in the state of Montana, and one of the things that people are shocked by when, when I talk about farm life and stuff is the importance of the chicken. Did you guys raise chickens? We, so we somehow inherited all the local classrooms chickens yeah. many times <laughs> when they would raise these chickens, and they'd be like, here you go. And we're like, oh. But honestly, they are some of the coolest animals, even though they seem dumb. Um, we had a couple that just we were like, don't, don't go where the predators are. That's not a good idea. <laughs> but the truth is, a chicken, and this is the coolest thing ever, that is our closest descendant to the dinosaurs that we have today. You're kidding. So if you look at their feet, mm-hmm, they, are, they are related to the dinosaurs. So if you look at their feet, it comes as no surprise. They look like they have the little claws and scales. That's exactly what we think the last descendant of the dinosaur is. Wow. We, we would go into the hen house at about 5 o'clock in the morning and grab a hen because we had to go out to the hay bales to, to get, so we could feed the cattle. And those chickens at 5 a.m., would, they, they would if there was a snake or if there was a mouse in the hay, they would find it and eat it. <laughs> They're great at keeping bugs and all the other little pets away. I love it. <laughs> now, what did you learn in putting this book together for National Geo? Because, I mean, every, I, I, I could sit in your library and just veg for months. Oh, for me, this, this book, I feel like every time I open a new page or I would get a new manuscript, it, I learned something new. Mm -hmm. um, this book, one of my favorites, honestly, is the area of the brain. Because I know basically nothing about the brain. And honestly, I had some things that... We're actually myths that we busted, like the idea that the, the largest brain is the smartest brain. And you're like, oh, wait, no, that's, that's not the case. Actually, what's the smartest brain is it depends on the number of wrinkles you have in your brain and what? how close the neurons. So, yeah. So if your brain wrinkles, it's because it's trying, we think that it's trying to get the sides closer to each other. And when they keep doing that, the neurons can fire quicker. And our evidence for this is, do you know who had the most wrinkly brain of all humans? <laughs> Who's that? Albert Einstein. Did he really? Wow. Yep. He had the most wrinkles. So those kind of things made me think. I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that. I didn't realize. It makes sense when you think about it. It's going to keep folding over to get more synapses, and you keep firing those those thoughts and, and electro, um, like electro power. Um, so yeah, so I loved that section. I also just, oh, I also struggle because I, with taste, I can't eat cilantro. And it drives me insane. <laughs> and it turns out it's because I got genetics that say I can't eat cilantro. But I did get the ones that say I can eat spicy food. That's it. <laughs> and who, know, who knew that, right? Who knew it was it was all related to genetics? <laughs> so it was I, I would I would love to see be. I would love to see a group of children when you share stories like this, especially with a wrinkly brain, just to watch them roll their eyes in the way of trying to get a wrinkle in their brain. I'm, I'm going to work on it. I'm going I'm to I, I got to get a wrinkle going on here. Right. <laughs> right? It's like it's got to happen. I'm going to be smarter this way. Yeah. <laughs> so where can people go to get more information? I know that National Geo Kids is is all about you know one on oneness and interaction. Where can they go to find out more information and get involved? Absolutely. So this book is sold wherever your favorite books are sold. 
whether it's online or in a bookstore. And we do have more information on our website. We also now have a YouTube channel that you can go check out where we like to put up some videos to inform you more. Yeah, so check out Nephew Kids YouTube. Um, we're trying to get everywhere because we want to make sure that all of this information gets into the hands of kids and that they keep learning and exploring and getting those answers to those big questions of why. Wow. Christina, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, Arrow, I hope so. And I was like, we need to have you come out here and we can give you all the books and we can watch your, we can all read them together. Oh, let's do it. I'm, I'm in for that. I'm in for that. <laughs> <laughs> come on out to DC. <laughs> <laughs> well, you be brilliant today, okay? You too, and have a lovely weekend.